The Chinese military looks set to gain control of the prime waterfront land in Hong Kong, even as anti-Beijing protests continue in the city. Under a 1994 Sino-British agreement, the Chinese People's Liberation Army will automatically be granted control of the Victoria Harbour Pier tomorrow. Now, meanwhile, Hong Kong authorities have scaled back celebrations to mark the anniversary of the territory's handover, and that's on July 1st, after activists vowed to hijack the event. For the latest, we're joined by Bruce Harrison in Hong Kong. So, Bruce, what are people saying about the prospects of Chinese Navy vessels berthing at Victoria Harbour Pier? Well, I'm standing not too far from the harbour now, and I was visiting a rally earlier tonight where demonstrators are calling on G20 leaders to raise their concerns about this city and China's tightening grip over autonomy here in Hong Kong. Uh, and they were telling me there that they believe that this move is only going to uh, inflame tensions that have been building throughout this month. Uh, uh, following um, the uh, the push of this extradition bill, uh, they said, despite the fact that this has been a plan, a transfer of land, this dock to the PLA uh, for decades now, um, last-minute efforts by pro-democracy lawmakers were blocked uh, this week, and now these ships are going to be able to come into the harbor. And as I said, they think it will only boost the numbers on the July 1st um, event on Monday. Well, Bruce, what's the response then to the scaling back of the July 1st event? Also, another moment that, uh, or another move that is inflaming tensions. What the government has said is that uniformed groups, whether it was school children, and even some issues were issued to the local Red Cross. They're no longer needed to be in attendance. And that's because the government believes these, in particular young people, at least some of these uniformed groups they have singled out, uh, will only uh, create uh, an atmosphere of, of perhaps even uh, of chaos, uh, one uh, that could um, resemble what we've seen earlier this month, because July 1st is expected to be a massive turnout, uh, marking the handover of, of British Hong Kong to the Chinese. Um, and that's exactly uh, the concerns of, uh, concerns of Beijing's uh, tightening grip is what has uh, drawn the protesters out this month. And they fear that if they can, uh, they believe the government, that is, uh, Hong Kong government, they can thin the numbers uh, that it will prevent any kind of disruptions from the, the planned events. And once again, the people at this rally nearby telling me uh, that they're very concerned that these groups have been uh, singled out and told not to come. And I, I think it's only going to make things worse for the government and perhaps draw even more numbers of people out. Well, saying that, you know, it's really been three weeks of mass protests in the city. The government still hasn't responded to all of their demands. What can we expect to happen next then? Well, that's still just the biggest question right now. Um, it is true that, at least this week, at some of the demonstrations, we have seen dwindling numbers. There hasn't been another march that organizers say two million showed up to earlier in this month. There have been these small wildcat movements targeting government offices, trying to disrupt services. But throughout the week, I've seen fewer numbers at those events. So it's, it's a question of whether or not these demonstrators can maintain momentum. This week they've had a boost because of the G20 taking place in Osaka. They were able to rally behind that, uh, visiting consulates, delivering letters, asking those countries' leaders to help them out, um, as well as placing ads in international media, calling on these G20 leaders to address their concerns uh, in Osaka. But beyond that, what's next? What is their, going to, their, mo their moment to rally around? There's no face, there's no particular organization uh, bringing these people together. Um, right now, a lot of young people uh, have the summer off from whether it's high school classes or college classes, and they have free time. Uh, but once class resumes in the fall, will they have the same numbers? Will they have the time to maintain this momentum? I think the government believes no, and they're trying to wait out the demonstrators. Well, the protesters, you know, uh, the protests are very disruptive to everyday life. Have there been any rumblings from businesses about inconvenience and lost revenue as the protests have dragged on? Not too much. There have been some uh, jitters in stock markets over the past several weeks, but ultimately, most of the businesses have been behind this movement. They fear that any loss of autonomy, tightening control from Beijing will ultimately impact, in particular, this extradition bill will in impact their international um, 
their business negotiations. So business is, by and large, we've seen have been behind this movement. And when I've seen young people out on the streets, uh, standing outside of storefronts, different uh, shopping centers, by and large, the people that were working there were supportive, giving thumbs up or just offering a pat on the back, handing out water. Um, no one is in, has been in one place for too long, save those massive demonstrations we saw about two weeks ago. And then, of course, uh, the Friday last week where they were there all day and through the night outside police headquarters. But beyond that, their movements are fairly quick, two to three hours at a time, trying to not disrupt these businesses.